Welcome to Security with Spirits, an Oak Barrel Security Podcast. I'm Jason. This is Ben. Jonathan. And Tony. We'll tell you what to drink while we tell you why we drink. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the podcast. Today, I am drinking a good old S.E. Callahan's from Tennessee Hills Distillery 51 bourbon, just straight up, because that's the kind of day I'm having. So, Jonathan, what are you drinking? The same thing, except I've mixed it with club soda and a little bit of lemon, so I've got a whiskey soda going. Oh, well, to be fair, I, I put ice in there, so. Yeah. 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 Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Stay hydrated. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> ben, what do you got? I have Ovan on the rocks. I'm really enjoying this scotch. It's, I, I think people should give it a shot if they like Highland scotches. This is It's a Western Highland, so it's still Highland, but it has a little bit more smokiness to it. What have you got for us today, Tony? Our signature cocktail for this episode is the Oak Barrel Mo Heat, though. I'm still starting my way through the classic rum cocktails. So here we've got pretty much a basic mojito uh, with a little jalapeno hot sauce thrown in for the heat. Pro tip, I did actually find a bourbon barrel aged white rum for this. Ooh. Three years aged in, in actual oak bourbon barrels. I can tell you it made absolutely no difference. <laughs> it, it adds nothing. Just go ahead and use your your decent decent mid-range white rum. You can get the recipe, pictures, and even some cybersecurity stuff at oakbarrelsecurity.com. And don't forget, you can now leave us a voicemail at 234-201-0707. Give it a shot, and we'll give you a shout. Awesome. Well, that sounds tasty. And tonight on the, uh, as far as the, the speaking topic, we have being frustrated with the exciting reality of having a job that you can never actually master. I'm sure there are other jobs out there that, that run into the similar roadblocks or, or issues like this, but we're going to keep this cybersecurity focused. I know for myself, it is insanely frustrating to to never to know that you're never ever going to complete something it's always going to be there's always new things out there there's always new threats there's there's new you know it's it there's always something that's going to to change the landscape and, and you can look at it as a as a frustrating thing or as something that you know you can look at it as a challenge that's glass half full glass half empty type thing Ben, kind of, what are you? What are your? What do you think? Like, as far as like the, like, how do you address this as a half full, half empty kind of guy? What, what do, what's your perspective? I have uh, some I've given this a lot of thought. Several years ago, I watched a movie called Juro Dreams of Sushi, and if you've ever seen, I think it's called Chef's Table, and they're kind of this, I would call super produced i guess super produced specials on chefs and their restaurants and their michelin journey and all this and it goes into like their personal lives and stuff this movie is kind of the what springboarded that that series and one of the things that he discusses in there like when he's he's been making sushi for decades and he each time he tries to make a sushi that makes that makes it or, or prepares it or anything he tries to do it make sure he's doing it better each time and it's it's an approach i think we might have seen it you might have seen it in your higher education discussions or your leadership discussions if you've taken a lot of courses they they call that that the kind of that growth mindset it's another piece of that where you're you're, you don't expect to master it. You just always strive to make it better the next time. You're not looking at it as a, as a, when I get to this point, I'll know I've mastered it. It looks at it as each time I do something, I need to do it a little better. And as, as a journey, as opposed to actually reaching a point. And I think that has helped me adjust my, my goals and my, my outlook 
in in how I approach my job and how I do things is because I use a methodology of learning and and doing to make sure that each time I do something, see if I can improve it and and then do it and just make it better each additional time. So you're talking about not necessarily something like not necessarily learning from your mistakes. I mean, that can be part of it as well, but also learning from the process itself. Yes. And making sure that each time I do a process, is it the correct process? Should I improve this process? Is there improvement to be had? And just keep making baby steps and improvement without ever having the expectation that I'll have it exactly right one day. Yeah, it's 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 a journey, not a, a destination, right? That that's the that is the frustrating part because it doesn't matter how much you learn, how good you get, you can be the best cybersecurity person that ever cybersecurity and know all of the cybersecurity things. And tomorrow any software vendor in the world releases a buggy update and your life is still ruined all over again. <laughs> or a new advancement in technology renders everything you've been doing useless. <clears throat> AI. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of like quantum computing and the advancements there like being able to shatter en- encryptions that we've been using and things like that. But yeah, the AI is the same kind of thing. Like everybody can speak perfectly the language that they need to speak. I've heard of that I read somewhere where they're talking about it using being able to use voice samples. Just any they can they can comb and absorb video material and get voices of uh, people and articulate things. You know, so that you can receive a phone call and do or or something like that or have a message video message. It's uh haunting. <laughs> But, you know, that's also the exciting part of our topic, right? That's the, the kind of the appeal of working in, a, in IT is that it's not stagnant. There's constant innovation, constant improvements, constant new things to learn. True. The, the, it, it does get scary when that innovation seems to be sort of spiraling out of control. I think, you know, in the past few years, we may have seen more changes than possibly in my lifetime. And, you know, I've seen the, the birth of the internet, but uh, it's, it, these changes are happening exponentially. So IT itself is changing rapidly, but then cybersecurity in particular, I mean, it's, it's not day to day, it's moment to moment when things can change for us. That's true. That's a good point. And it's, I, I like how it's, how you have to keep that perspective of you can either see it as a challenge and be like, nah, I'm out. Or you can see it as a, nope, sorry, swap those. I've had a couple of these S.E. Callahan's 51 bourbons. (laughs) You can can see it as either being frustrating and it's too much and I'm out. Or you can see it as a challenge and something new. Me personally, like if I had to go into a factory every day and make, you know, widget X, Y, Z, that's, that's not for me. Like if, if that's the, if that's the job and I'm not knocking it at all, but if that, if that's the job I wanted, that's the job I would have pursued. I wanted something fun and exciting and something new and fresh and something that I could, I could feel challenged and feel like I can, you know, grow and learn and I really think that cybersecurity is is the place to be. But if you're you're not up for the challenge, because it can be a challenge sometime, maybe it's not the place for you. <laughs> I will say though, and maybe this is a, a mid episode nugget. One of the things that helps me deal with you know those days when it is frustrating and it may be a little scary with the, the rapid changes and everything being chaotic. Sometimes it is good to just like find some of those mindless repetitive tasks and just build some widgets for a little while and kind of just do it do some work that you don't really have to think about too hard i always you know maybe go in and grab some of those easy tickets and uh you know just it's it's good to let 
let your mind relax sometimes on the job too. That's a that's a good mid podcast nugget snack. But yeah, that's there. There are times that I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go see what counts are out there that have you know not logged in over 30 days. And I'm gonna purge those. I'm gonna do that for an hour. <laughs> yeah, I find sometimes just auditing existing work. Like go through some stuff and see if these rules are ineffective or not being used. Let's let's make different ones or make different groups and things like that. You know, cleaning the house, so to speak. What well, isn't that one of the the five sigma things is make a mm-hmm. clean work area. Yep. Your digital workspace is, is a workspace too. Absolutely. It's a, it, it's actually a good, so that's a, another thing that, and you're right, that's something that I like to do is to go back and, because I love process improvement. That's, that's one of my, has anybody seen the founder? Yes. I, I absolutely love the first 45 or 50 minutes or whatever of that movie. Like before, uh, before Ray Kroc is, is, you know, just a total scumbag and <laughs> I, I love the innovation part and the, like, let's, let's figure out how to optimize workflows and efficiency and stuff like that. That's one of the things that I, I secretly geek out on is if I can uh, go back and look at, look at something I've implemented before and let's see, you know, let's, let's, let's call some of these end users and talk to them and see how they're, how everything's going, how maybe I can improve it, how I can change things. So for me, I I think that would be my, I guess it's, that's my own self-imposed challenge is trying to make the product better where it's not like an outside challenge of attackers are trying to, you know, exploit, you know, weaknesses or whatever. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, I, I love what you're saying because I feel like I'm the same way. The area that in is just so dynamic that it drives creativity, it drives innovation. I and mean, like how Ben started out, it, you know, it drives that growth that we're always having to improve ourselves to be able to keep up with the changing environment. It's like I was just reading about articles about how Google was getting rid of their 20% of like project free time creative time for their employees Ouch. Just, all right that just strikes me as incredibly short-sighted because you know not only do you benefit from that creative thinking a little off task time but it really does just kind of prevent burnout you can't operate at 100 percent all the time in this very no. dynamic world no I, I don't care like what level you are analyst or all the way up to architect engineer leadership whatever can't just spend all days in tickets like it's it's not a break fix world you, you can't that you've got to have some some projects some creativity some sort of and i know we've talked about this before but whenever you release something a service or a product or something to your organization the the world whatever you're releasing it to having some time to go back and 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 look at it and see where improvements can be made it's it's nice it's good for the soul like keeping that in mind there is no final in the game to it right it's always going to be changing innovating and adapting so don't don't race to that finish you know, keep keep yourself at that sustainable pace as you as you keep going yep yep <laughs> so you know maybe thinking about our nugget like how do you set realistic goals in a position that is that has no final destination that's a good question Ooh. i guess it would go back to that idiom like how do you eat an elephant you know, one bite at a time and that's another thing too like smart goals right that we all kind of learn about they need to be specific measurable achievable realistic and time-based and i think key emphasis should be on that achievable and realistic like uh, you might need to cut your your goals down to more bite-sized chunks 
so that make sure that you aren't setting yourself up to, for failure or to, to not achieve what you're looking for. Some self compassion there. <laughs> but I also, I mean, I'm a, I'm very task oriented, and it's so nice to be able to strike something off a list or move it in my Kanban board from, you know, in progress to complete. Or I think keeping, like, you can have a lot of little goals that keeps you motivated and keeps you moving forward, but you still have to have that, that mindset in the background of always improving, always looking for efficiencies and, and, and and just keep, keep everything improving. It's the wisdom of many, many drinks. Me down. Oh, got to keep on moving. Also, whatever you said, how do you mean an elephant? I I really restrained myself from not saying ass first. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you got to get rid of the, the bad stuff first, right? You know, you know. <laughs> it's like that. Uh, what was it? Eat the frog. Like so that's one of the books that I read. Uh, man, it's probably four or five years ago, and I tried to read the book. And the whole concept, uh, like it's insane the, the amount of books that come out these days that are, that take one concept and create an entire book around it. And that's one of them. So I can't remember who said it, but the, the idea behind the whole thing is, uh, eat the frog. So basically if you're eat the, like you look at your task list, your list of things to do. And if eat the frog is the worst thing on your list, then you do that absolutely first, get it out of the way, get it done, move on. And it's, it's good. Like it, it works. I, I kind of use it, you know, I, I use it, but the book, oh man. And the audiobook is even worse. Like the guy is like trying to have this like weird Casey Kasem voice. And he's like, always remember to eat that frog. I'm like, oh, God, like, this is terrible. I, I couldn't listen to the, I bought the book and I bought the audio book and I haven't completed either one. So I guess I didn't eat the frog when it come to that book. So I didn't eat that frog when it came to that book. This is Casey Kasem telling you to eat that frog. Well, so let me, let me pose this question. So what, so do you feel like if the, if there's a, if let's say, let's say you're working as a cybersecurity professional and you're getting really frustrated that you can't actually keep on top of it and keep it mastered or whatever. Do you look at promotions? Do you look at like a change, but not necessarily a change? Like, let's say you go to a leadership position or let's say you go to something, something along that, along those lines. I don't think the challenges, they definitely don't disappear. I was going to say, so what you're saying is if you're going to be ineffectual, at least be better paid for it. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. 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 (laughs) Eventually. Yes. (laughs) Well, I mean, at what point, what point do you think that maybe you have, maybe you, you haven't got to the point to where you've actually mastered the, the, it's really kind of a weird way to put it. Maybe not master the the tasks that are coming at you because it's always always growing and always changing, but maybe you have mastered the art of staying on top of it or staying ahead of the trends and you know evolving with the the threat landscape and everything else. At that point, is it time to advance? Is it so you can train others to do that? Or because if, if, if you go back to like, uh, if you go back to somebody like years and years ago, like a year and a half ago, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I was, a, a, a um, I started out at KFC first job I ever had, I think pretty sure it was yeah first official job started out as uh like the basically just cleaning stuff and then once you master that then you go up to like the the 
the cook's assistant or something like that. And then you master that and you go up to cook and stuff like that. But there's not really that path in cybersecurity. You don't really, at what point can I just deep fry some chicken? That's really where I'm, I'm asking, what I'm asking. But I think you, I don't think you've ever actually mastered, like you've, you've never completed, even though you don't feel like you've completed the job itself, I think there's that point to where you have learned enough on the job of what to expect and how to deal with stuff and how to improve and how to, you know, change and adapt and be agile. And I think at that point is the point to where you take your next step, like then the next step up and then you can, and then you're going to rotisserie chicken. So. <laughs> So what you might be thinking is like a personal goal for yourself and yeah. that like when is it have you mastered enough that you feel or when do you feel that you've mastered enough? Yeah, exactly. I think that that's a, a good conversation to have in any career, no matter what you're doing. Like when do you feel like you've done all you desire to do because it's not not worth staying in a job you're not interested in staying in a job you're not interested in is how we get bitter people in in these positions and such right yeah and having insight into yourself and what you enjoy doing even if it's something different than what you're currently doing you should be able to set personal goals for yourself for how you're going to get to that position. Like, how am I going to achieve that for myself? And it may take some work, but that work will feel invigorating because you have, it's a goal that, a personal goal that you desire rather than to meet an end, you're actually working towards something you want to do. And that in itself can be fulfilling. And then since you all were talking about leadership, I, I'll put a plea out to leadership of cybersecurity. Uh, recognize that this is a unmeasurable job. It is, a, there is no destination. We are frustrated because we can't win this game. We just have to keep playing. Um, so, you know, be gentle with us, set realistic goals for us. Don't beat us up if, if we don't fit into your metrics. Your, your defenders are getting beaten up every day on their own don't worry that's a good point and I, I think the I think what comes along with that is you really need to nurture and care for your cybersecurity professionals send them to conferences send them to training it's it's not a job to where they are the, the education will never stop never it just it there's always changes so there's always going to be ways to grow and learn um training is really good to to uh learn new skills conferences are really good to network and figure out you know what other people are doing and also to like ignite the the fire reignite the fire because burnout happens quite often and then also celebrate the the wins like there's all sorts of little things that happen that we're just like good you know great you did your job let's move on and i think the the media sensationalizes the the negatives a whole lot and that's not what we should be doing we should be celebrating you know um hooray our you know our cybersecurity awareness program has improved by doing this or our um you know we implemented a new firewall set of rules or something like that and it has blocked so many attacks or we have you know there there are so many things that you can celebrate and you have to do it and don't don't wait until because i see a lot of organizations doing this they they wait until the disaster happens and then they pump a ton of money into cybersecurity, and then after that they're like well look what we've done look what we've done look what we've done well they should have been doing that way way before the you know the uh, exploit or breach or whatever happened um so yeah 
yeah, always, always celebrate those. Always uh, continue on the training, promote that, that training uh, education wherever you can. Well, everybody, we've come to the end of our podcast. We appreciate everybody for sticking around. Uh, I want to take a moment and thank our uh, cyber overlords in uh, AI for doing whatever they're doing. Um, <laughs> please, <laughs> please don't, <laughs> please don't make our lives miserable in the future. Until next time, I am Jason. This is Ben. Jonathan. And Tony. See y'all next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.